Hey, everybody, what's going down? It's your girl, Jay Relay. You know, I always got something to say. And, ooh, we is the Top of Me podcast. Shout out to our sponsors, Houston Trade and I Set Up Slushies. And you all, I have a special guest in the building, Mr. Fluke. Ow, my bad, y'all. You know. <laughs> it's I got a million of cold outside in Houston, <laughs> Mr. Fluidelic in the building, y'all. He has been cranking up the charts, okay? For y'all that don't know, y'all need to know. He's from Houston, Texas, and he's been doing his own independent thing since, really since I met him, to be honest. Um, right. He released some new singles. And, uh, what was it, a new, what was it, a new album or a new EP mixtape? Yeah, it was, it was actually a new album. It's called Fill in the Blank. It's on all platforms. Um, yeah, that one that one was a uh, a real special album for me. You know, um if you could tell by you know the titles of the names, we'll get into all that later. But um yeah, that's the new album. Fill in the blank. Okay, so I wanted to go ahead and jump into it. What was it like growing up for you in Houston, Texas? What side of Houston did you grow up on? Because of a lot of our viewers, you know, we have people that aren't from Houston or Texas, period, yeah. that look and so we go by what side you're from. Right, right, like right. you know, what's your area? So, right, you know, but to them, it would be like, oh my god, they can't answer that. <laughs> so go ahead, and then uh, go into that. Yeah, I'm actually from um, Harm Clock, Texas. That is actually um, a neighborhood that's about maybe ten minutes from the from the Houston Texas Stadium. You know, I grew up right by the Texas Stadium. You know, we drive right down Main to 610, and it's right there. So. Um, just growing up in that area, I soaked up a lot of knowledge just being around, you know, being in the hood. And um, my dad, he actually lived in Missouri City. So, you know, every other weekend I'm over there and then I wind up living with him in high school. And that's really when the whole music thing started for me. Once I got um, started living with my dad, um, we actually turned my whole room into a studio, you know, signed off on it and like you said the independent thing just kept going from there and um but yeah i'm from harm clark texas that's where my roots are really from but like i said you know i also had that most city in me that south park in me as well you know sunny side like I've, I've been around you know just growing up when my mom you know she moved around a lot i was able to soak up different hoods but harm clark for sure is where you know, I I take that one with me forever because that's why I grew up more than anything. Do you feel as though there are different sides of Houston that a lot of people don't know about? Like most city is totally different from Howard Clark and as far as uh, music, which is totally different from South Park and their music. Um, yeah, I mean, it's a lot of it's a lot of cities, you know, that's that people don't know about in Houston. And you know, you could say that for a lot of cities, you know. I don't really know about Chicago unless I'm listening to, you know, Lil Durk or Herbo or, you know, certain people. So, you know, that's what I wanted to do with my music to, you know, kind of just like give people some type of grasp. So it's definitely differences for sure. Every hood has its codes. It has its ethics. And, you know, it's all about, like I said, just soaking up that knowledge, paying attention to your surroundings. And that's really what I did growing up. I just paid attention to my surroundings and just kept it true to myself. One thing about Houston, Texas that people may not know about is we start freestyling right. like in elementary, you know, at the lunch right, table. Right. Damn, <laughs> somebody bring out a number two pencil because it's about, to, it's about to go down. Don't bring out no mechanical <laughs> pencil because that's what we used to take tests. But like, <laughs> <laughs> right. experiences in school because you say you went to live with your dad in high school but you lived with your mom you know during those early years so right. what was that like in the freestyles did you have to switch it up like oh damn okay go. um the thing was with me it's crazy because a lot of people because this is the thing i'm gonna be honest with you i really didn't get better at freestyling till i got older and started it was like back in that time they, it was like they knew I did music, but they respected it enough to where if I'm around, they probably wouldn't even put me in the freestyle. And that's just being honest, not saying that I couldn't do it because I've been in some freestyles before, but it was plenty of times where um, I would go to like, you know, high tower parties, Elkins parties, and 
you know, next thing you know, it's just a whole crowd and everybody freestyling and you just, you know, you just taking it all in, you just soaking it all in. That's probably one of the most Houston things. I'm glad you said that because that's probably one of the most Houston things that you'll probably never see at no other like city at a party, like where they just jump in, just straight start freestyling. Don't nobody care about nothing else. Right. You didn't hear it. I came down like, oh. <laughs> right. Gave that. Oh, they about to kill it. Oh, man, holy look. Hey, this is what. <laughs> like, oh, my God. Yeah. Like, you give yourself yeah. your own nickname in the freestyle. Yeah. That's, that's what I was just like. Oh, damn. Oh, what? Wait, mm -hmm. we do ourselves? Like, oh, that. When we do that? Right, right. The whole time, every, or like if you see, the, you say that punch line towards your opponent at the time, it's like, oh, right, right, right. Your mama drive a hatchback, bro, and that's right. why your barber put your line back. <gasps> oh, <laughs> so like the whole right. time, like, yeah, you could tell who who just got roasted in the freestyle because they just sit in class, they just went to the back, be like, right, just sitting there, so crazy. They're doing the work now. <laughs> 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 right, they doing their work now. They chilling. Like, oh, be like, oh, damn. And so, like for the rest of the semester, you just they gotta call you hatchback. Like, now you <laughs> right. gotta start that play. When they talk about your barber and your mama, uh, you gotta right. just got transfer. Right, right. But fast forward, right? And you said mm -hmm. you didn't really uh, perfect your freestyle, so you got older. So what quote unquote exercises were you doing? Were you freestyling every day? Or were you just like, okay, let me just sit, meditate a little bit? Or were you doing it in front of friends? Um, getting it, came, it came along the way, just um, just kind of like just practicing. You know, I had my friends would start eventually coming around and we at the crib. Like I said, we was making music, you know, at the crib. So, you know, we got the whole setup a lot of times you know, we not even record that we'll just play beats and this over time, just that repetitiveness and just writing, writing music, you know, gaining words, just figuring out certain things. And cause a lot of times if you pay attention, people are going to freestyle pretty much the same things that they do over and over again. Like my friends, it's like, they would say the same things over and over again, just a different way. And, you know, that was kind of the things that I started learning, you know, develop a story, figure out something that, you know, that's just going to kind of get everybody like into it and get you going. And, you know, what's going to make you be, you know, wanting to spit and fight back. And I think another thing that just got me into just like freestyling was just like honestly just trying to be the best that I could be at any avenue in music, you know, any type of avenue in music. I wanted to um, to perfect. That's why, um, like I said, Fluidelic, it actually started from Fluent. That was like one of the first names I went by. And I called myself Fluent because I wanted to be fluent in all aspects of music. You know, I'm, I want to learn how to play an, an instrument eventually. I'm working towards that. I want to learn how to make beats. You know, right now I'm just on the singing and the rap and freestyle and the engineering side of it, you know. So a lot of the sounds that, those extra sounds, you know, I'm engineering it myself. You know what I'm saying? Like I'm really diving into my own. A lot, very few people touch my stuff. That's just honest, you know. That's really, that's, but yeah, as far as the freestyling, it was just repetitiveness. Just going back and forth with my friends, you know, just really just sparring, you know. We just going at it. We just spin bars like who? Because we love it. It's a passion. We just like, you know, you hear that beat. Like for music, in artists, it's different. As like I've always said that, and people don't really like know what I'm saying. But when I say it's like it's different because we make music. So that sound, everything like that, it's hitting us way different than the average listener because. We're taking that and we're soaking it in to possibly help ourselves, you know, as opposed to those people who just listen just to, you know, consume it, listen, they good on it, they waiting on the next album or they waiting on the next project. 
did you have like other did you release a mixtape before the album prior to the album yeah, or? yeah i have <laughs> crazy thing is i have so much material on soundcloud um i used to be on hot new hip-hop when that was popping but you know my work on hot new hip-hop isn't even there anymore they took it down or you know i don't know I don't know, but I still have it myself. I still have the files. You know, like I said, I keep my stuff. I'm always keep everything on me. You know, that's my my receipts. But yeah, I have plenty of projects before this one. Like, this is the one that I just really just, like I said, I wanted to market it. I wanted to utilize it because like I said I'm on Apple Music now I'm like man you know it's a it's a legit it's a legitness to it. I don't know if that's a word but it's like it's a it's a you know what uh, hey look we're gonna make it a word we're gonna make it a word. We're gonna make it a word like it's <laughs> make it a word but the you know the authenticity I'll say that the authenticity on Apple Music, you know, like I said, I got stuff on SoundCloud, plenty of mixtapes, um, you know, of my early days working out of my dad's, uh, you know, working out of my own room, doing stuff myself. But um, like I said, with this album, you know, just being on Apple Music, it's a difference because you sit yourself right there and you're sitting with like Drake's and the, you know, your name is right there. So you're like, you're putting yeah, yourself thought process. In, the, in the whole category of all, right. like all of them, everybody. Instead right. of having, you know, your own separate entity. Right. Know? Yeah. Exactly. So it's like that that in itself was just like a I gotta go hard. Like I'm making sure every album is clear cut. I don't care how many listens it get or how many it is, you know, it's gonna be all the way to the T. So yeah, that was um, just, like I said, just music, period. Just always, I didn't realize how much of a passion it was until I was at my lowest points, honestly. Are you okay talking about those lowest points? Of course. You know, that I talk about them in my music. So it's like, I've always wanted to have these type of interactions, you know, Right. Since I've been making music, I've always wanted to have someone reach out to me and like, you know, just interview me and talk to me and stuff like that. That's why I say, you know, this is a blessing, you know, for real. Like, you know, this is something that's just like to me, like I said, I'm but yeah, those those low points, um just uh when I first went off to school, cause like I said, you go, you at KTSU, that's my school right now. You know what I'm saying? So when I first went off to school in 2012, um, things was kind of just like confusing, you know, just being young and just trying to figure out the world. What do you want to do? Where do you want to go? Your major, this, that, and the third. And then, you know, 19 years old, my mom gets sick. And, you know, you're 19, oldest, you know, I'm the oldest of four. So, you know, you know, got to be strong with that. And, like I said, them low points, you know, bad breakups and stuff. It was like every time I wanted to just like lash out or like scream or just, you know, act out of character, that beat was just right there. You know what I'm saying? That beat, those beats are just right there. And like I said, my 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 strongest music came from like my lowest points. You know what I'm saying? Like this album and then i had a mixtape before this one called hope um that was on soundcloud and um you know it was crazy because when i did this album i kind of had those same feelings that i had when i first worked on that album hope that's how i knew that it was going to be a, a, a it was going to be legendary I just knew it, like, it was just a feeling, you know, I just couldn't really describe it. You know, it was just, it just all just was there. Like, it all just came, it just, crazy thing is, I always try and say this with my music. I'm just a vessel of 
a bigger something because a lot of the stuff, even I got to go back and listen to my own music and be like, dang, I put all that together. Like at the time, I'm just like, you know, just getting it all out. Just Just making sure, you know, just like, I just want my thoughts and my emotions and my feelings on paper. Right. You have that, that moment where you go through something, you're like, wait, hold up. (laughs) Right. (laughs) Replay this in my head. Like, yeah. Like you listen back to yourself, like you say it, and you just like, damn. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's, that's those moments where I'll be like, it's definitely a higher power for sure. It's definitely a higher power that works through all of us, you know, that helps us see our purpose, you know, because I knew I was always good at music, but before probably, let's see, I've been making music for about 11 years now. I was 16. Um, I probably didn't see it truly like going all in with it and feeling like I could do something with the music, probably not until probably like 24, 25, and I'm 27. So, you know, that's why a lot of times, you know, even with like young guys that I see, you know, trying to figure things out in life, you know, I try and give them that, you know, that push, like, dude, like, I've been making music since I was 16. I was 20 years old when I saw one of my songs hit 20,000 plays and I still didn't believe in myself. You see what I'm saying? Like still was like, I feel like it's it's something more, or I'm missing something. And it wasn't until I just started getting into myself, you know, just that self-reflection, like, dude, you're good. <laughs> you wouldn't be doing this if you wasn't supposed to. Right, so, that's, what, that's what I love about it. Do you, do you, because uh, of course, I mean, this made you a totally stronger person and you're right. forever evolving. Like, I don't think anybody has, well, I don't think anybody will ever reach their full growth because you always have to evolve from something. Mm-hmm. Like right, right. So, um, and you, I love how transparent you are. And you, you're telling mm-hmm. us that music consoled you it was that it was that hug you needed that that right. talk you needed that that push you needed in order to be right. a better person you know what i'm saying and to be a better all-around artist and right. i want i want you to touch on uh do you feel as though that plays a part in you remaining independent and not signing with anybody as far as what the the your music like because you know you are one with yourself you know right. you know your position within your music and your career it, does that play a part in you not signing with anybody at the moment oh um, like you wanted to remain independent because you don't want out quote unquote outside forces to change who you are or, or your direction that has a yes and no um one of the reasons why I haven't like just really been because I definitely could have went that route. Hey, sign me, sign me. I'm I'm out here with the music. It go hard. Sign me, sign. You know I could, and I I could. I truly believe that it would have been you know been somewhere. But I, like you said, I think it was that authenticity that I wanted within myself. Yes, and just knowing that I'm good enough. I know how to. I can engineer. I'm sitting in there. Uh, 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 uh. I'm sitting right next to Buddy, telling him what to do. You know what I'm saying? Like when I worked on the album, those sounds, like every, all the sounds, like I don't know if you listen to the entire album or anybody, but those sounds that you hear, those are those are all me and my friends. You know, my friends who came to the studio and was like, "Hey, maybe you should." hit this, like guys, you know, my guys who I make music with. You see what I'm saying? So it's kind of like, even with my boys, you know, I always tell them like, man, yes, you know, me staying independent is is a good thing for me, honestly, because like you said, that authenticity, that just staying well with myself. But of course, you know, 
I do have like options that I've thought about. Like if someone were to, you know, throw the deal on the table, I do have some, you know, I definitely have, I really only have like one option if I did, you know, sign truly and honestly. I have really just like one other than that, I would stay independent, truly. Who That's, is it? Who is it? <laughs> oh man, I ain't nobody. Now nah, I tell you, uh honestly and truly, the only honestly. And the reason why I say that is... It, Wait, repeat it. Because literally when you were, when you said it, the yeah. same, bro, say it, say it Oh, exactly. That's what I'm saying. Want me to say it, but it's cool. Um, if I did have one. The only one I would honestly sign to if I did have a sign was Rock Nation. I would sign with Rock Nation. And the only reason why I would sign with Rock Nation is because, um, number one, creative control i i know they all getting creative control in there you know even max o cream got mentioned of rock nation and he just dropped his album and it looked like ain't nobody touched nothing but him you know what i'm saying and i i um one thing i've always the reason why i say rock nation is because jay-z as a businessman as an artist and as an artist he has always let every person who has came in his room be they self. He never tried to change Kanye. He never tried to change any person who came in. He let them be they self and he worked within that. You know, he, Pharrell came in, he got on Pharrell beats. You know what I'm saying? He didn't say, hey, Pharrell, be on my realm, you know? And I feel like that would be probably like the best, the best option if I were to sign. It's either there or I would just go independent because I wouldn't, I wouldn't do any type of deals with with no no record label, honestly. Because number one, you don't really need record labels now. Everything is digitized, so you can just drop your own stuff. You don't need them to back you up for album making albums and all that other stuff. And right. then a lot of these. A lot of these venues, right, and a lot of these venues will reach out to you if you go hard. If you got high demand, see, the thing is, I've been telling people this, social media, if you ain't caught on to the realm of social, like me, I don't even, I don't even fuck with social media like that, personally. This is strictly business for me when I do social, like when I'm posting every day, everything like that, I'm on there for business. I ain't, no pleasure is involved when I'm on social media, and that's straight up facts. But if you ain't caught on to how self-made you can become on social media, it's ridiculous. It's ridiculous because it's like, that just goes to show how many, and this is no knock to people. This is a, it goes to show how much they have brainwashed us, you know what I'm saying, in the not catching on. Everything so I scroll down, it's like four, five cooking, cooking pe people cooking and stuff. Just showing they showing what they can do cooking. I'm like, man, and I seen it. I seen it before it even before it even became what it is. I knew what it I knew what it was. I was steps ahead to be honest. You know, but Oh, let me talk about you was the first, the first rapper to do that. No, 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 no. I'm not gonna say stuff like that. I ain't finna say like that, but I'm saying like. I was steps ahead as far as like realizing that it was going to eventually be a self-made type of business type of aspect that you need to figure it out. That's why I just was like, man, I'm going to just taste my music and just look at it. Like I got a solid following and it's people out there who represent for me. You know, you can build your own business in this world now. You just gotta be dedicated. You gotta be dedicated to yourself. You gotta believe in what you're doing. Like I said, I wouldn't have became as knowledgeable as I am with what I wanna do if I didn't have those moments of failure, number one, and feeling like I wasn't good enough. So you had I had to go through those moments to be like, dude, you love it in what you what you portraying yourself or even allowing yourself to believe right like you holding yourself back from you right you know right. 
gospel star. You know what I'm saying? Like you put up a fence or a gate. Right. A feeling that you didn't, or matter of fact, the person, yeah. your true person. Right. A lot exactly. of times we, we do do that. You know, we build up a wall for outside people, but it's really holding us back. Right, exactly. And so, uh, yeah. you know, a lot of times that takes years to knock down. That's and true. Sometimes, you know, it's, we even if there's a hole in the wall, we still be like, well, I would just put, you know, a couple of bricks up. And then before you <laughs> all this back up, you'd be, right. like, hey, right. no. you be like, you'd be like, what? Like, right. Am I in trouble? Am I in? No, I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. <laughs> but uh, <laughs> I want to touch on the future for you. Yeah. Well, do you go, first off, another question. Do you go by Fluidelic more or do you just go by Justin? Um, I, really with my music, I go by my name. Um, and like I said, that just goes back to the, you know, being authentic, being myself, you know, it's like sort out the names, you know, sort out the gimmicks. What am I hiding from? This is me. It's my truth. Sign it on the dotted line. It's a business. Put my name on the dotted line, Justin Bible. But my friends and everybody else, you know what I'm saying? Like, if I'm out, it's kind of like a, um, I hate to do it like this, but it's kind of like Diddy. You know what I'm saying? He got P. Diddy, Puff Daddy, you know, flu, fluidelic, you know what I'm saying? That just kind of, it just kind of became something that is stuck, you know? And I love it because it's, Everybody loves a nickname. <laughs> Everybody loves a nickname. A lot of people don't know Jay Renee is a nickname, but we're not going to say about government. <laughs> yeah, we're going to do that. Too. We're not going to say about government. Do you, okay, so your music, is this going to be part of different installments? Like, are you going to tell a story with with the future albums or future mixtapes that you may put out? Yeah. Um, everything that I do is a story within myself. It's my truth. Um, um, on the first song, it you know, artists always do this, and it, it's it's funny that people don't catch on, and it's so obvious. Like the first line I said before I even did the album, and I told my homeboys this, I was like, "Dude, everything that I do is strategic. It's like, it's like, um, it's like Battleship to me, you know, steps ahead." And um, my first line. On the entire album, I'm three albums ahead of y'all. Simple as that. I got three albums already that I have the concept, the title. It's just all about the material within it. Um, I actually do have something that's coming. Um, I can, I can, I mean, you might as well. I might as well. I might as well. Yeah, that's what I'm you might as well. I'm actually, I'm actually working on, I have a cousin that's a DJ. I'm working on a um, a chopped and screwed album with him, as as far as like putting kind of like uh all the artists do uh greatest hits, you know their greatest hits, yeah. but I'm gonna do my greatest hits, but chopped and screwed to give it that Houston feel. Um, I won't reveal the name of it, but I will say that that's an album. But I will reveal the name for this one. Um, I actually have coming out. It's gonna be called SoundCloud Summer. And um, it's called SoundCloud Summer because that's where it all started. That's where the 20,000, so I'm going I'm to force my my people who fuck with me to go back to SoundCloud, revert back. How much do you really fuck with the craft? So I'm going to do some on SoundCloud for them, and that's coming next summer. And it's already, I'm already in the works with it already. I haven't written anything, but... I already got the concept and I don't want to give the concept because if I give the concept, then that's just going to like, I don't want to amplify it too much. I really don't. I want to keep it, you know, I love, one thing I love doing is surprises with my music. You know, a lot of times I'll just drop the, the album cover. Fuck it. Just drop it. Y'all just going to look at it and wait till I'm done. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Just, just to play around, you know, because I know it's going to be great. So why not use my platform and kind of give it some professionalism along with it? Yeah, I'm nobody, but I'm going to still make people. Hey, you, you are somebody. You are somebody. Right, right. I am somebody. You're right. 
And I want you as a person to go forth and take all the music risks. I don't care if you want to put an accordion in your uh, shit, okay? <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? Just right, right. Try all your talents in your music because you know that's going to push you even further. Right. The further right. than what you think is far. But you know what I'm right. saying? And uh I want you to tell everybody where can they find your music, where can they find follow you, where can they find old tapes, new tape. Well, you know, we got you they gotta wait till the next summer. Right, 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 right. But um, yeah, know, um well everything. For everybody out there, you know, if this is your first time or this will be your first time being introduced to me as an artist, you can follow me on Instagram, Fluidelic, F L U. A D E L L I C. Um, on Twitter, you can follow me, Hoodie Bible at Hoodie Bible. Simple as that, Hoodie Bible. Um, on Apple Music, you just type in my name, Justin Bible, and it's gonna be right there. And all your music is right there. SoundCloud. SoundCloud is kind of hard. I could give the SoundCloud, but that's like, that's a lot. That's, I mean, it's not a lot. I just have two different SoundClouds, um, two different SoundCloud pages. So like finding it is kind of not difficult, but um, like I said, it's that, that's what I'm saying. That's why I'm trying to do SoundCloud summer. That way, once they revert back, they go, oh man, okay, I remember all this. Okay, this is this where it's at. Cause I, you know, like I said, when I was, um, when I first started, I was trying to learn the business aspect of it. You know, at first I was just dropping my music. Fuck it. Like, I don't care. Y'all gonna find it if y'all find it. But then, like I said, I got older and just started taking it more serious and realized that I had to have some organization behind it. You know, had to have some, you know, easier ways for people because, I mean, even myself, people lazy. You feel me? Like... <laughs> We so lazy to the point we don't even want to type it in. We just want to click on it. For real. It's true. I done seen people, like, sent them the link. I done sent them the link. They, oh, man, you sent it to me again. I'm like, dude, I, it was a simple click in the, what you? Yeah, oh, I That's why, um, you know, a lot of people, even for myself, they be like, you got to make a link tree. I'm like, okay, cool. I'll do it when I feel like it. <laughs> but I want to thank you so much, Justin, for stopping by and talking with me. And Of course. Oh gosh, I'm just so excited because oh, everything, y'all, he, he going to tell me more off camera, but right. y'all just got to, y'all got to pee for us. So follow him on all social media. Uh, we're going to put it, we're going to put it on his screen, his social media right there. Uh, so y'all, oh my goodness, y'all keep it live. This is Talk With Me Podcast. This is Justin Bible, aka oh, Mr. Philadelphia himself. You know what I'm saying? Catch the sleeves because you already know he's going to please you. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> All right, for sure, man. Like I said, just appreciate you for having me. Um it's on it's on all platforms. The new album Fill in the Blank is on all platforms. Get on Spotify, get on YouTube, Apple Music, just anywhere, man. It's it's not hard. It's just all about willing to listen. Hey, you already know. I got you, bro. I got you. So uh, you already know. be safe, bro. Cause you know it's hard out here for a pill. <laughs> I here for a pill, most definitely. <laughs> Catch you later, bro. All right. I ain't say, man, this is Loso with Houston Trend telling you to check out my homegirl, Jay Renee, with the Talk With Me podcast. You never know who's going to be the next guest, unless it's you. And if you want it to be you, make sure you submit j.renehtx at gmail.com. Send her your information, send her all your links to any of your music, your bio, your videos, all of that, man. We need all that. You know what I'm talking about? Make sure you get on the Talk With Me podcast with the homie Jay Renee. Because with Jay Renee, it always go down. You know what I'm talking about?